So as you've come to expect from a Ubisoft game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is packed with some very obvious easter eggs and some not so obvious easter eggs. If you've played Odyssey, it's pretty clear that this game is huge and pretty awesome. Putting aside the controversies around the game's likeness to Assassin's Creed Origins and the bigger controversy around the game's microtransactions, Ubisoft have created a stellar RPG, though the series is definitely starting to stray from its roots. Now I'm setting myself up for a big fall here, but I feel confident in saying that this video will contain every easter egg in the game. That's not the sound definitely definitely right though, so if you think I've missed something then please comment it down below. Anyway without further delay, let's get started. <laughs> So at first I want to take a look at the epic battle at the beginning of the game. Based on the story of the 300 Spartans who stood their ground against the overwhelming numbers of the Persian army, you take control of King Leonidas, the leader of the Spartans, as he destroys anything and everything that comes into his path. After completing this sequence, you'll unlock this achievement. <laughs> Now I expect that Gerard Butler fans who aren't middle aged women will immediately get this reference to the pretty awesome film 300 and this scene in particular. Madness. This is Sparta! The film also has a sequel but the less said about that the better. Something which I've mentioned so many times now that I'm beginning to bore myself is the fascination that Ubisoft has when it comes to referencing their own games in their own games. During one of the game's few present day sequences you can find Sam Fisher's night vision goggles. Looks third echelon. Or was it fourth? Fisher is obviously the main character from the Splinter Cell series. If you look out of a certain window, you can hear Layla reference the Fry Twins from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I wonder if the Fry Twins would still recognize London. A rooftop's still a rooftop. Also in a back room, you can find a rabbit from the Raving Rabbit series. No, I'm not going to make the sound effect. What? 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 One more potential reference in this room is this one here. Eagles are fine and all, but a pet monkey would be even cooler. Layla mentions a pet monkey, and I may be reaching here, but this could be a reference to the monkey featured in the trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Hey, yo, 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 hand it over. I got a hot date. Don't do late. <laughs> Monkey's got a date. What? 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 That's Swiss fucking chocolate, pig. Bon appetito. How awesome does that game look? It still hasn't got a release date, but if you didn't know, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is actually developed and published by Ubisoft, so it's not out of the realm of possibility that this is a reference to that game after all the other references I've just shown. Or it might not be, it could just be a coincidence. Sometimes when I'm easter egg hunting, I can read too far into things, so I'd love to hear your opinions on this one. Talking of reading into things, great segue there, if you check out Layla's computer you can find emails between her and a doctor. The doctor assures Layla that this is not a trap, to which Layla replies, it's a trap. I immediately thought of a certain scene from Star Wars, but again didn't want to read too much into it and let my imagination run away with me. That was until I checked out the next couple of emails and Layla is definitely referencing this scene from Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Take a base of action. Green group, step across the holding sector and each other. Admiral, we have enemy ships in sector 47. It's a trap! If you want more Star Wars easter eggs in video games, I have a whole video on my channel dedicated to the subject. Okay, I have a confession to make. I've never really been a big fan of Zelda games. Okay, okay, put your pitchforks down. I understand they're good games, I mean Breath of the Wild looks spectacular and I can understand why people love it, I've just never felt compelled to complete an entry in the series. It seems that someone at Ubisoft is a fan of the Zelda games though, as you can find a reference to the collectible Korok seeds at this location.
This may be a coincidence, but the Zelda games are known for having pretty aggressive chickens, and if you've ever been foolish enough to take a swipe at a chicken in Odyssey, then you'll know how deadly they can be, especially in packs. In a game filled with beautiful locations, Laconia is definitely one of my favourites. I love walking along its snow topped mountains and enjoying the view. That and the sound effect used when walking on snow is so satisfying. It's not all gorgeous views and pleasing to the ear sound effects up on the mountains though. You can find a sword in a stone at this location. The Sword in the Stone is almost certainly a reference to the famous story of King Arthur and the Sword of Excalibur. Quote what the sword is doing in ancient Greece is anyone's guess. Now I know it's popular to hate on AAA publishers, but something that Ubisoft does that I love is the Ubisoft Club. For those that don't know, it's a storefront which allows you to spend currency you've earned from playing other Ubisoft games to unlock some really cool cosmetic items, weapons or themes for your games. Now these next couple of clips aren't really easter eggs if I'm honest. They are just really cool unlockables which reference past games in this series, but I thought I'd include them so I wasn't accused of missing them. At first you can unlock Evie Fry as a lieutenant on your ship. As mentioned earlier, Fry was one of the playable characters in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. You can also unlock different themes for your sailors ranging from the Medjais featured in the last game Assassin's Creed Origins to both male and female assassin crewmates. I was pleasantly surprised as well to find that the female crew members actually have female dialogue recorded for them. So as I said, I know it's not really an easter egg, but worth a mention anyway. There was a point in time when Ubisoft was striving for historical accuracy in the Assassin's Creed games. In a previous video I told a story of how a crossbow was removed from the very first Assassin's Creed because it wasn't historically accurate. It seems that Ubisoft have relaxed those rules a little bit these days as you can buy a unicorn skin for your horse. Getting the skin is a matter of luck as it's sold at random blacksmiths throughout the game but shouldn't be too hard to find for those wanting to ride in rainbow themed style. This next clip is more of a detail than an easter egg, in fact it did feature in my 10 amazing details in Assassin's Creed Odyssey video, but I thought it deserved a special mention again. On the starting island of Kefalonia, you can climb a giant, naked statue of Zeus. If you climb onto Zeus's private parts, your character will have something to say. I should probably not climb on this. Not an easter egg, but still pretty funny. Finally we have an easter egg that when I first saw it, I wasn't really sure if it was an easter egg. At the Gortin waterfall you can find two men engaged in battle with a small crowd of spectators cheering them on. <laughs> The popular opinion here is that this is a reference to a scene from the Black Panther film where T'Challa fights M'Baku for the crown. Take a look. I mean the setting is similar and whilst the crowd is nowhere near as big as the crowd in the film, it certainly does bear a resemblance, that I can't deny. But as I said, I am really on the fence with this one, so let me know what you think. So hopefully that is all of the easter eggs in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As I said, if you think I've missed an easter egg, let me know in the comments down below. If you're a fan of easter eggs, details and secrets in games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.